Hi guys, welcome back to Luke Ecker Working. I'm Luke Ecker, and today I'll be showing you how I build this storage shelf that I designed myself. Let's get started. kind of by myself here so I'm ripping down a 4x8 sheet of plywood and I go about three-fourths of the way and I run to the back of the table saw and pull it towards me and then let the pieces drop and then stack them. Right here I'm cross-cutting all those pieces to length and since I'm using the rip fence and it's longer than it is wide I'm making sure to be very careful where I put my hands so I can put pressure against the fence because I can't have the wood rock in any way. So for this cut I have to make a 32 inch cut and my fence is only 30 inches so I can't use the fence. I have to use my circular saw and from the blade to the end of this is an inch and a half. So I have my drywall square here and I have it at 32. If I go an inch and then a half and put a mark right there and I put my cutting guy on that mark I just made, then I can put the mark, and I put the guide on that mark, and I can rip perfectly on the line. I obviously pour on the other side of the wood and I just use my thicker saw and keep pressure towards the fence and cross with them all. So I'm ripping all of these boards down and I'm, again I rip it about three-fourths of the way in and then I set my roller stand up so it's touching the underside of the wood and I rip it as normal. So my camera died when I was filming this, so I didn't get any footage of me making the rats. But I have a half inch data stack in my table saw, and I, this is called a sacrificial fence. I don't want to mess up my aluminum fence, so I clamp this on just a piece of half inch plywood, the same material I'm using for the storage box. And I have it touching the blade. It actually cut in to this. So then, how to make this cut is because you can't really use a miter gauge because it won't fit. And I don't have a cross cut sled. So you hold your hand here and put your hand here and push. And you can't have it rock in any way or else you get a really bad kickback so you hold your hand here and you push it this way and push it towards the fence so you can't have it rock. That's it. Right here I'm making the dados being very careful not to have the wood rock in any way then I flip it around and make the other dado so it's even on each side. So I put 
these three in on the bottom. I didn't have the sides on yet. I tried putting the top on, and since the wood, since it's plywood, it's bowed. So I had a, I got one in with corner clamps, and I slid this one in, and now all I have to do is slide this one in, and it forces the wood into alignment because the data is perfectly straight and then perfectly aligned with the top and the bottom. So all I have to do is slide that in and then put the sides on. And my plan is to glue the middle one in, run a bead of glue on the top and bottom of the datas, push the sides in, and then use some bar clamps and clamp the top and bottom on and then just check for square on everything. Well, I got the storage shelf in. I tacked it to the 2x4. I have it holding all of my kits in drills, fit sets, and all the other miscellaneous items. It has four shelves, and it passed my test. My test is, if I can't stand on it, I didn't do it right. That's my little model I like to follow. But I built stuff. So all of those boxes I made in previous videos, I could stand on all of them. So that tells me that I made them nice and solid and my joints are nice and strong. Well that's it for today's video guys. I hope you liked it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends. Be sure to check out my Instagram page, Luke Agazuma and I'll see you guys next time.